Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 6, Part 2 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance presenting further related information about the laws of compensation focusing on the analogy of reaping what is sown in kind this session was recorded on the 31st of October 2017 from 11 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Compensatory benefits and rewards of sowing then reaping in kind. So now I'd like to go through a discussion with you about the benef benefits and penalties associated with reaping in kind mm -hmm. um, and we can use three main areas. So the first one is personal ethics. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about the penalties and the benefits. Yeah. Personal truthfulness and being sexually moral or immoral. Yeah. So we'll talk about each one. So I suppose here what, what we're trying to do is uh, help people to see the rewards of living in harmony with the law mm -hmm. and the, ben the penalties of living out of harmony with the law. Because if you don't properly measure the rewards and, and, the, and the penalties, then, you, you know, there's less desire in you to actually go ahead and do the loving thing, if you like. Yes. So yes. this is about trying to encourage people to, to examine truthfully what the loving thing creates mm -hmm. and examine truthfully what the unloving thing creates. And, and therefore what compensatory penalties or rewards might need to be applied because we've either been unloving or loving, mm -hmm. yeah. And we've already established in this discussion that it, this is immovable, the benefits and the penalties yeah. are, are going, <laughs> they're going to happen, the, what we're going to discuss is going to happen. Yes. We'll talk, we'll, we'll apply these uh, benefits and penalties to um, some specific examples at the end of the session. Uh, but here we're just going to speak about what is the truth. Yeah, so, so here we're probably not going to spend very much time on each of these things. We just want to list what some of the truths are because it's not exhaustive. None of these things that we're covering now will be exhaustive. They're just some of the positive benefits of ethics and some of the penalties associated with not having ethics, for yeah, example. Yeah. And, and, and we're just listing them very briefly so people can start using this as a bit of a tool, if you like, to begin evaluating for themselves mm -hmm. what are the benefits from God's perspective of doing something compared to the penalties uh, of doing something. And, and if we know the benefits and the penalties, and we start to evaluate the benefits and the penalties instead of just ignoring them, mm -hmm. then we have a higher likelihood of seeing the fact that we're living in or out of harmony with love. And then for we might have a higher likelihood of wanting or developing a desire in ourselves to address the issues of repentance and forgiveness about the areas that we're living out of harmony with love. So, so you know, this is a very important part of the process is helping us expose where the sin is mm -hmm. so that we can now say, well, OK, this is where the sin is. Do I want what are the benefits of wanting to change that sin so that we no longer reap those penalties, for example. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we've used three kind of areas of existence. So yeah, very not wide areas, of, wide existence. areas <laughs> of existence, not specific examples. Yeah. But obviously there's other big wide areas of existence that we're not covering but very, you could logically reason out if these are the benefits or penalties related to this, say, big, large area of ethics, then I can start to think, well, if I look at child rearing, mm -hmm. <laughs> how, what would be the benefits and penalties here, yes. given what they've said about yes. those other things? Now, the reason why we've chosen these three areas is particularly two of them, first two of them, ethics and truth. These two areas have a very, very large bearing on mo many or most aspects of our life mm. so we could apply them in almost every thing that we do and um, this is why we've chosen them and the third area the one about sexual morality we've chosen because it is very popular nowadays 
to not have any sexual morals mm. and uh, and to have a very loose concept of sexual morals mm -hmm. and without understanding the penalties associated with that yeah and so we we wanted to cover that as well just because it's an it's an area of existence on the planet where there is a whole heap of misconceptions associated with god's viewpoint yes. regarding what is moral and what isn't yes. yeah okay Compensation and the benefits of ethics. What kind of benefits would I expect to experience as a result of having personal ethics and specifically as it relates to sowing and reaping in, in kind? kind? Yeah. Well, if I'm ethical in all of my dealings with other people, and in my dealings with myself. In other words, what I'm doing is I'm treating everyone around me as equal to myself. Mm -hmm. and, and I view whatever I dis decide I would like for myself, this is also what I want to give to others. And, uh, and whatever I would like from others, I, want, uh, I give to them whether they give those things to me or not. Yeah. Now, under those circumstances, you can see that it's highly likely the people around you will start ex seeing that that's the way that you interact with them in every case. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, they would be encouraged through their interaction, at least with you, yes. to act in the same way in return. Mm -hmm. So you could see that ob an obvious yes. Yes. first thing is yeah. that people, if you're acting in an ethical and honest way with other people, often that will definitely encourage them mm -hmm. to act in the same way with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then even if no one's ethical in return with me, um, I'll have the rewards, won't I? The, the feelings that come of uh, worth and feeling um, a positive benefit of actually being more in harmony with God's laws with regards to ethics. Yeah, so we could yeah. say we have positive emotional and physical benefits, like we sleep well at night, it's yep. a physical benefit, <laughs> but emotional ones will be, yeah, I have a fairly good sense of your own worth because you sort of feel like, oh, I'm doing the right thing here. It's, mm. a, it's, a, it's a good thing for me to do this, even if nobody else does that with me. Yeah. And so you have a good sense of uh, your own worth. You, you feel good about yourself doing things like that. And so that certainly is going to have a positive benefit on of, on, on yourself, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then after I pass, presumably it's going to be even better. Because why, why do you say presumably? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying not to preempt what you're going to say, but obviously I think it's going to be even better because there there we have more restriction on people who are out of harmony with God's desires. Yes, and, yeah. and that probably brings us to the fourth point in that in the, um, the reason why God views ethics as so important is because God wants you to see that all of God's other children are the same as you. Mm. He wants you to treat your, his other children, your brothers and sisters, in the same manner as you would like to be treated. That's yeah. what he wants. Yeah. And, and in fact, many of his laws reward that behaviour. In fact, if you pass over into the spirit world, having treated everybody on earth in exactly the same way you would like to be treated, mm -hmm. then you will probably pass in a fairly happy condition. Mm -hmm. right? Unfortunately, most people don't pass in that condition because we have very strong demands, unethical demands and unethical addictions yes. where we want other people to meet our addictions, but we're not willing to meet the same addiction mm -hmm. in another we often have codependencies where we meet a different addiction in them, yeah. not the same one. So, so we're very, very frequently unethical in our yes. dealings. Now, if you think about it from God's perspective, God sees all of his children as equal mm -hmm. and he wants you to see all of his children as equal. Yeah. That means that you are a child, a brother and sister of every other person who's ever lived and whoever will live. Mm -hmm. And if you have, if you arrive in the spirit world with that belief, you can see that your condition is probably going to be a fairly good condition. Mm. But even while I'm on earth, I actually enable a, cl a further close, uh, I, in I create the potential for a closeness with God just because I'm, I'm close to God on this one issue of ethics. 
That's right. Yeah. yeah. And it, conversely, it would be the opposite, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that if you harm another one of God's child, children, it's like poking God in the eye. <laughs> And in a, some ways, that is is the case. Of course, doesn't God doesn't feel a negative emotion about about anything? But but God does feel that it is wrong of you, and you're not respecting Him mm-hmm. if you treat another one of His children badly. Mm-hmm. And so, obviously, you're you're not a, a relationship with God is not going to be possible while you are unethical with your brothers and sisters. And human God's view of ethics and human view of ethics. There's a large gap between those two things. God's view of ethics is very refined. So here we're talking about God's view of ethics. Yeah. And and so what we what we want to see is that if I have God's view of ethics, now I have a strong potential of having a relationship with God, and and at least because I have treated my brothers and sisters well. Yeah. Right. And and this is why in the first century I said to people the words. If you, if you did this to the least of my brothers and sisters, in other words, the person who you think is the least of your brothers and sisters, if you gave them water to drink when they needed it, or you went, you know, you did things for them because, because it's the right thing to do and, and, you, and you wanted to do it, and, and you did it for even what you viewed as the least of these people, mm-hmm. the people who are in the most hardship, or who, who are not powerful or, you know, not for a personal reward, then it's as if you did it to me, mm. and you will be rewarded for that, mm-hmm. right? And that and that is the reason why those words were stated. Because if if, if you treat another person uh, well, it, it's the same as if you treated me well, right? And this is what people don't understand about us uh, either very much, no. is that when we see one of our people who are our acquaintances, yeah treating another person well but treating us sorry treating another person badly but treating us well we don't see that as as very good at all in fact we we see it as a big problem and in fact many people have been removed from from doing things with us as a result of that problem where they might be treating their wife or their husband badly but then they treat us nicely Mm. or they might be treating you well but they treat me badly. Yes. Right. And uh, these kind of things, uh, from God's perspective, are not ethics. And and not having ethics means there's an immediate block between you and God. Yes. And also, not having ethics also creates an immediate block between you and the person you're attempting to have a relationship with mm-hmm. immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, if you see this in a husband and wife situation, where if the husband is unethical with the wife, he might demand that she cooks and cleans for him, for example, because he goes out and earns some money. He comes home, she must do all the cooking and cleaning. Well, that's quite unethical. Mm-hmm. And, and the wife eventually is going to be quite unhappy about that kind of a relationship. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and, so, and so finally, um, I'll, if I have these ethics, one of the benefits in kind is that I don't have anything to repent for. Yes, it reduces your repentance yeah. requirements. Yes. <laughs> and as we've stated right from the beginning, repentance is a very, very difficult process emotionally yeah. and quite painful to go through where you've done something wrong towards others. And if you don't have to do it, it's far better than if you do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So there's many benefits that we will reap in kind if we do have personal ethics. Yes. Compensation and the penalties for lacking ethics. So in what way would I be penalized if I lack personal ethics? And as this relates to sowing and reaping in kind. Mm. So it's similar to what we discussed when we talked about the benefits of being ethical. Now we're talking about the, benef- the penalties of being unethical, mm-hmm. and, and they are very similar in kind. So in other words, if I am unethical with people around me, um, that creates a situation where I treat people differently to how I expect to be treated. Yep. And, and this is going to create a huge amount of problems in my life insofar as not only will other people be very unhappy with me for doing that mm-hmm. and therefore you know it'll be very bad for my relationships 
but on top of that, there's a higher likelihood they will treat me unethically as well. They'll go, well, he's never good with me, so why should I be good with him? Yeah. That's a human failing. It's, not, it's still not in harmony with God to do that, mm -hmm. but that's what they'll be inclined to do. Yeah. They'll be inclined to treat you badly because you've treated them badly. Yes. Yeah. So you, m my lack of ethics would actually create a compensation where other people lack ethics with me. Yes. Yes. And while that's not God's intention necessarily, no. because God's intention is that you, someone else be ethical, whether you're unethical or not. Yes. So God's laws are working upon their ethics as well as uh -huh. yours, bear in mind. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, you could say that it is a part of the penalty because because you've created the situation where you believe you should get uh, 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 be allowed to get away with something that they uh, have to do for you. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay, well, even if, even if, as you said, everyone acted in harmony with what God wanted, and I Which was would be the, great. It'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm the only unethical person mm. in the mob, yeah. in the pack. Yeah. Um, I'm still going to have a lot of negative emotional penalties due to my lack of ethics. And physical penalties too. Yeah. You, you will find you'll create diseases in your own body as a result of your lack of ethics, as well as uh, emotional penalties where emotionally, things won't be well with you. And in fact, if everyone else was ethical, you would find an extreme amount of pain very quickly mm -hmm. because what would happen is every one of those people would reflect back to you your poor ethics. Yes. And so you'd be constantly reminded of your poor ethics as well, right? Yeah. That being a demand of them truthfully to be truthful, yeah. you'd be constantly reminded of your poor ethics and none of them would ever want to have much to do with you as yeah. a result. Yeah. And so you're going to find that, that if they were all ethical but you weren't, mm -hmm that in the end you probably won't have hardly a relationship with anybody in your anyway, life. Yeah. yeah. And it will only be with those people who are unethical that you will finish up in a relationship with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and after I pass, the penalties will be large and they'll take into account all of the short and long term effects upon myself and others of my lack of ethics, won't they? Yes. Yeah. So remember, it depends on my intentions, of course, that, that comment. But, but yes, if my intentions are to be unethical with you and, and be, to get specific results, selfishly motivated usually, and then obviously that's going to have both short and long-term effects on everybody's life around me, of which I will have to pay the penalty. Mm -hmm. So this now greatly increases my repentance load, if mm -hmm. you like, the pain associated with my repentance. Yes, so that my repentance load is up as well, mm -hmm. and I'll be more distanced from God as well. Of course, because from a, as we said, God wants you to treat your brother and sister as if you, you know, the same as yourself. If you treat them differently, um, all of God's laws are acting to correct that behavior. And there are huge amounts of penalties associated with treating somebody in an unequal manner. Mm -hmm. And so, so yes, when you pass, usually people notice it only after then, but oftentimes before they sort of have feelings about it, but they don't attribute it to the ethic, lack of ethics. Mm. But after they pass, it will be made very clear to them how their lack of ethics has applied in every situation in their life. And there'll be a huge amount of problems associated not only with their own personal turmoil and emotions, but also with the fact that they're far distant, removed from God and therefore distant from God's love and distant from any advantage they, they can get through having a relationship with God mm -hmm. until they work through the issue. Mm. And so, you know, that's going to, and for many who have been unethical on earth, that is a long time yeah. because they still carry those desires into the spirit world when mm -hmm. they pass. Mm. So this lack of ethics has a large amount of compensatory effects. We've spoken just generally about what they are. Um, but these effects you would classify as in-kind effects? Yes, they're all, they're all demonstrating my lack of inequality that exists within, lack my of, lack of equality, yeah, sorry, yeah, that yeah. exists within me. Yeah. So that they're all demonstrating these things to me mm -hmm. and, and, and precluding me from having equal and loving relationships. Yeah. And that's all a part of my lack of ethics. My lack yes. of ethics creates unloving and unequal relationships. They create, it creates power-based relationships rather yeah. than relationships 
that are based upon love and care and consideration. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of that is a, is a part of the consequence or the penalty of not engaging ethically with your brothers and sisters. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Compensatory benefits of truth and truthfulness. So what kind of benefits would I receive for being personally truthful uh, in regard and, and what kind of compensation in regards to uh, reaping, uh, sowing and reaping in kind specifically? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so if we, we can see that if I'm personally truthful with others at all, on all occasions without any um, unpredictability in it. I'm always predictably truthful and honest <laughs> and I'm transparent with everybody. Then you can see that firstly, that would create a fair bit of trust mm -hmm. uh, with everybody around me, wouldn't it? They'd know that they can pretty much trust that I'm being truthful and honest all the time. And also it's highly likely going to encourage them to be more truthful, transparent and open with me as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And what I notice is that the law of attraction acts then to either repel people who don't value truthfulness Correct. and attract people who do. I see that in our life a lot. Yeah. Um, the you, people who don't value truthfulness at a soul level are repelled from our life. Yes. And the people who love it yeah. are attracted to our life. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's a benefit for that would occur for everyone. Yes. Yes. And, yeah. and as you can imagine, that creates a lot of safety in your life. You know that the people you're dealing with are honest and open and truthful with you. Yeah. You know that the guy who's delivering your you know, goods, he, he's honest about how much time it took him. You yes. Know? Yeah. And you can trust all of that. And, yeah. he, and he is particularly honest with you yes. because he knows that you're not trying to get around the issue and you know, you're ethical with him and you're honest with him and open with him. And, uh, and and so he can be completely honest and open with you now as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really great to have that relationship with people in the community, mm -hmm. even people who, who don't believe in divine truth or anything. It's great to still have that kind of relationship with them. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we also don't have to spend a lot of time and energy keeping our story straight <laughs> or remembering what we said to this person as opposed to that one. There's none of that burden and we feel our conscience is clearer, actually. Yeah, well, you know, a good liar has to have a good memory. <laughs> Otherwise, they're going to get caught out sooner or later. And usually they do, right? Yeah. And also, you know, oftentimes, initially, their conscience will bother them. Obviously, over time, they become more and more detuned from their conscience if mm -hmm. they lie. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so therefore don't see any problem with it eventually, mm -hmm. which is even makes it more difficult for to be repentant about it, actually. <laughs> yeah. So therefore, there's going to be more of a repentance load of more pain associated with repentance about the issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the other thing is that if I'm truthful at, at all, um, on all occasions, I don't actually have to spend much time and energy trying to control or manage how other people see me, what they feel about me, because I'm actually not engaged in that process of wanting that, wanting a facade. Yes, I'm not invested in their emotions anymore. Mm. I'm just going to be truthful and they can have their emotion, whatever they have to know about it. Some of them will be happy. Some of them might be very unhappy, you yeah, know? Yeah. but whatever their emotions is, well, that's their emotion and they're allowed to have it, right? Yeah. And the person who's honest and truthful lets other people have their feelings about everything. Yeah. And, and that's great. You, so you don't they... have to worry about other people's feelings anymore <laughs> then. <laughs> this is a bit of a side note, but would you say that one, that those things are, um, they happen together? Or can I be willing to be truthful at all occasions and still worry about how people view no, me? No, it's, it's very hard for a person to be truthful on all occasions and still be worried about what other people think. Yeah. Because the worry about what other people think eventually causes you to feel like not being transparent or truthful anymore. Yes. And, and lying. Yeah. So, so you know, you, you will end up giving up the whole concept <laughs> that you need to be concerned about what another person thinks about the truth. Raise the white flag on that one and say, okay, <laughs> I, I'll surrender to what anyone thinks about me. And yeah, I'm gonna... you'll process emotionally what anybody thinks about you. Once you get through that, you, you'll just love it because it's so freeing mm -hmm. to be able to be truthful and in all circumstances. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
So even if no one's truthful in return, what kind of benefits do I encounter? Well, it's very similar to the ethics, isn't it? In that I'm still going to get positive physical and emotional results from God's laws operating in harmony with my truth. Remember, all of God's laws, the two, the two primary principles that govern all of God's laws are truth and love. Yeah. So if I'm already engaging one of those principles, truth, all the time, then obviously there's a huge amount of rewards that now I'll receive physically in terms of my health and my happiness and emotionally as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to receive a huge amount of rewards and just because I've been truthful all the time yeah. and transparent about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, again, this is similar to our previous discussion. After I pass, there's going to be a lot of rewards. I also have the, I open the potential for a closer relationship with God. Yeah, um, and, and a lot of the rewards are because, because I now have this love of truth, it's highly likely that more truth will come to me. Mm. Right, so now I'll discover the truth about things that the average person doesn't discover mm. because I have this, and this is a conversation in kind. Yes, I, I'm I'm discovering the thing, the very thing I'm doing is is now what I want, yeah. and because I want it, I will receive it. Yeah, and and because it's a it's truth that I want, it's in harmony with the law of God. And so God wants to give me more truth. Mm. He, he wants to inform me about more things. And I'll, I'll, I'll end up with a lot more knowledge than the average person as a result. It's interesting, isn't it? Because uh, there's a kind of a global issue with a disillusionment that we'll ever find truth, you know, and a lot of postmodern kind of feeling is just like, it's not, it's not possible. But we've got to be no careful there because some of it's not just disillusionment, some of it's desired ignorance. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, sometimes, sometimes we do things because, not just because uh, we have a belief, but because we desire to have that belief. Mm. The, the desire for the belief supports my lack of truth in my life so in other words i could desire that there is no truth and that will then support me not being truthful yes and uh, and we've got to be very careful of those yes. kind of attitudes in mm. our life because what they do is they create a lot of problems in our life physically and emotionally well yes and i was thinking of it in the converse of this disillusionment with truth but if if people actually um valued truthfulness just personally they would find truth what you've just said is they would find truth would come to them they exactly. would know truth and the average person on this planet does not value truth mm -hmm. you can see that in the media and Definitely. like it's always playing out that we we listen to a whole heap of lies yeah and many of us know their lies but we repeat them yes right and and you know our experience with the media has been that you know if you can't get the story you want, what do you do? Make it up. You make it up, you know, and present that as truth, yes. you know, and everybody believes it. Yeah. Why do they believe it? Why don't they examine for themselves? Because they like to believe it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to examine for themselves. Yeah. They don't want to believe there's a truth. Yeah. They want to believe that that's his story and that's my story and whatever. Yeah. And we're all allowed to have our own stories and yeah. all this kind of stuff. That's yeah. what they prefer to believe mm -hmm. because that then stops them from having to change, yeah. from having to grow in love. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, we hold on to a lot of these things for reasons or purposes that are very unloving that, yeah. and very selfish. And yet you're saying the benefit is if I just valued personal truthfulness, then I would not only support the truth around me and I would want to receive truth, but I would actually have access to absolute truth far more readily yes. than anybody else. Because now you have faith in the concept of absolute truth. Yes. So of course you're yes. going to have a desire to receive it. <laughs> you value it. Yes. You, you, you understand there's an absolute truth about me. Yes. And so therefore I'm open to the absolute truth about you and, and my universe. existence and yes. the universe. Yes. Yeah. 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 Very powerful benefits. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I think th that that is such a tangible um, example of, of an in-kind compensation. Yes. And the scope of how big the in-kind Every aspect of your life is affected by it. Yeah. Every single aspect of your yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. And we... 
you know, I'll be closer with the three things we're talking about. We haven't even talked about God's definition of love yet. No. And we won't in this conversation. But mm -hmm. you can see that the same applies with that. Yeah. And the same applies with every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. And some of these big aspects of your life, like ethics, truth, morality, these are big aspects of your yeah. life. If you can get them right. Yeah. It's going to make a huge impact on what you need to repent for. <laughs> well, they're like values, aren't they? That, yeah. that overarch so many decisions we make, so many relationships we have. And if, if yeah. we can value the loving sense of each of them, then we create in-kind compensation in all of those other yeah. sort of roles or aspects that we have in our life. Yeah, yeah. huge yeah. impact in our life if we yeah. can get them right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm. Compensatory penalties of lying. <laughs> so what kinds of penalties for lying would I encounter, especially as it relates to compensation and reaping what I sow in kind? Hmm. So obviously here again, it's very much the opposite to truth, telling the truth. If I lie to others, people eventually know that I'm lying to them. They'll eventually work out that it's all a lie. And, and that can be, the lie can be in a lot of ways. Like I can say what I believe is true, but actually act differently. Mm -hmm. So that's acting a lie. Or I could be stating a lie. Or I could emotionally have a lie in me. In, in other words, I'm saying to someone, I love you, when emotionally they feel from me that, they don't, that you mm -hmm. don't. It, it could be any of these things, right? And what that's going to do is it's going to create a lot of uncertainty in the people around me about me yeah it's going to make them feel like suspicious and uncertain but also on top of that it will attract other liars into my life mm. so so i'll be it, it, almost every person i'm relating with is a liar so so <laughs> and, and sooner or later that means that they they are going to lie to me and i'll be affected by those mm. lies in some way and it, it also colors my perception of of others doesn't it because i immediately assume because i'm going to lie that others are go have that potential that's and the automatic presumption yeah. Yeah. yeah and we find that all the time, all the time. if a, if a person comes to us or visits us who has a presumption that we are lying or going to lie to them mm -hmm. they are always liars themselves yeah always liars themselves yeah. and they can't believe when you're telling them the truth they just can't <laughs> believe it uh, yeah and uh, I've experienced that personally, we say with my family and different things where they sort of kind of imputed these motives onto me and you that I, I was honestly speech flabbergasted. I thought, I would never think to do something like that. And it took me so long to, to realise that's what they think. That's how they would think. <laughs> in yeah. the same circumstance. In the same circumstance. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 And you see that a lot. Yeah. 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 Obviously, also, I'm going to have a lot of negative emotional and physical uh, impacts from my desire to lie. Yes, if penalties. you lie and you do it consistently, you're breaking pretty much every single one of God's laws. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, that's going to have a huge impact on your soul and on your physical body. You're okay. going to get very, very sick if you keep doing this. Yeah. Eventually, you're going to get very, very ill. And and the the lies also have high level of influence on other people generally. Mm. And, and this uh, has a big flow on effect uh, as well, where, where what they then choose to do with your lies, yes. will a, lot, a lot of that will be attributed to you mm. as well. Mm. So now you, you, you're having to bear the consequence of their behavior as a result of your lies yes and which is kind of mind-boggling when you yeah, think well that, about the media and things like that exactly but if you're a media representative lying for example you're affecting millions of people mm -hmm. now in a negative way mm -hmm. man that that has a terrible detrimental effect on your soul yeah. and and while you may not realize it in your life you will definitely see it when you pass mm -hmm. yeah so there's increased penalties and then as we keep saying there's increased load on how much I have to repent for. Yes. Yeah. Imagine if you've spent a whole year, years of journalism lying or creating stories that mm. are not true or embellishing stories so that they become more flamboyant or yeah. more interesting yeah. and so forth. And people have interpreted them as you telling the truth and you pass. Mm. You imagine the, the everyone around you is going to see that you did all that. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to have very much respect for you at all. Mm. So while you think you're getting respect now, 
at the end of the day, you're going to have no respect at all from anybody yeah. and you're going to be in a terrible state emotionally and, and spiritually mm -hmm. as well because it's a terrible lack of love that motivated that desire. Yes, so your lack of respect for others in not telling the truth about them. And your lack of love for them. And yeah. lack of love mm. will result in a in-kind compensation, which is a lack of respect towards yourself. Yes. Eventually, when the truth is exposed. Liars are lies. eventually yeah. exposed, whether yeah. it's here on earth or in the spirit world, they're yeah. eventually exposed. And once they're exposed, there's a terrible amount of consequence for that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and as we keep mentioning, God can't actually have a relationship with me while I'm a liar, basically. Even if I'm just lying... Um, to my brothers and sisters, yeah. to, to, in my family, in my relationship, when I was late for work, whatever. Yeah. Um, that's directly opposing God's... All of God's laws. Remember yeah. the connection with God, the love-based connection with God is dependent upon the Holy Spirit. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit is a spirit based upon truth. You have to be in state of truth before you can connect to it. So if you lie all the time, you're not in a state of truth yeah. pretty much all the time. Yeah. So yeah. how can you have a relationship with God? You can't. Yes. So, yeah. you know, a relationship with God's not possible. Yeah. 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 Okay. Not at all. At all. <laughs> at all. And that, that bears repeating. Yeah. So there's a lot of quite um, powerful or um, intense negative penalties for lying and desiring to lie. Yeah. 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 Compensatory benefits of sexual morality. Hmm. This is a lovely one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of benefits in kind, compensation in kind, would I receive for being a sexually moral individual? Well, again, the, the very first one obviously is probably quite obvious in that if, if I am a sexually moral person, there's a, and it's truly coming from my soul, not just from some kind of, uh, you know, uh, Bible definition or Quranic, Quran mm -hmm. definition of morality, but it's truly coming from my soul that I, I want to be sexually moral and I am sexually moral in my interactions. You mean from God's definition? God's okay. definition, which means I'm yep. not sharing my sexual energy with anyone yep. other than my partner mm -hmm. who who I believe would be my soulmate. Yes. Yeah. Um, then, then the, this, it's highly likely my partner is going to honour mm -hmm. that uh, feeling in me, yeah. and 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 engage in the same with the same moral fidelity mm -hmm. as as I have. The likelihood rapidly um, goes up, doesn't it? That's yes. the in kind compensation that, yeah. uh, and also the attraction, the laws of attraction, which interact with this compensation laws, don't they? Yes would draw more people to my life, potentially even draw my soulmate to my life because I have this pure desire. Correct. But also bring other people in relationships with maybe not my sexual primary relationship, but other people around me who also value sexual morality. Yes, yeah, so I won't have to put up with people sexually projecting at me yeah. who are not my partner because yeah. that's a very unpleasant thing to put yes. up with, as you know. And, and I also uh, can feel like usually people who project sexually at somebody who's not their partner have quite a lot of quite damaged emotions to work their way through. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you wouldn't have to be in the company generally of those people frequently. So, so the beauty of that is that you feel very relaxed about your own sexuality. You're not worrying about, oh, that person, what's that person doing with me? Yeah. Because, you know, care what they're <laughs> trying to do because it has no effect on you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 your heart and your soul is sexually aligned with your partner. Mm -hmm. It's not aligned with anybody else. You, so, yeah. so you don't have to worry about what anybody else decides to do with that. Yes. Um, and so in that way, it's a far more relaxed state. You're not, you're not trying to manage, again, people or manage situations. Well, you're relaxed situations. with your own sexuality as well. Yeah. So, so, you know, instead of being on tender hooks about, oh, what's that person want from me? And mm -hmm. what, do I, what do I have to give them to make myself feel safe or secure or whatever other reason you might mm. be leaking sexual energy before then? And you're no longer doing that. And so now every relationship you have is a very pure sort of relationship. It's also very interesting because all the people who want to do that with you are not interested in spending any time with you anymore. Yes, because they, they're not, there's no codependent exchange of energy, sexual energy. That's right. 
And also you become uninhibited in your own sexual expression to a large degree, don't you? Because you feel this moral feeling. No, my sexuality is a good thing, yeah. a good part of me, and I want to... And it's just for that person. Share and, it with that person. And that person's it for me. Yeah, and that feels great, and let's go. Yeah, kind of yeah, that's yeah. Right. You know that every sexual desire you express with that person now um, is high, more highly likely to be unselfish. Yeah. It's also more highly likely to have more pleasure associated with it as well. And you certainly won't be bothered by any bad conscience about having a sexual desire. Mm. So you won't be trying to inhibit your sexual feelings yep. all the time um, because you don't need to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so even if my partner, say, is not moral with me, mm -hmm. um, I'd be free of the compensatory shame that comes from sexual immorality. Yeah, so when my partner cheats on me, I would not see it as my fault in mm -hmm. any way. Mm -hmm. I, I would see it as, no, that, that's their problem, that, you know, their choice. And, and it's not because I've been uh, cold or distant sexually from them, because I haven't been. I'm, yes. As I've already discussed, you'd be sexually open in this state. And so um, you know that any reason for their cheating on you would be their soul-based spiritual or emotional problem yes. rather than yours. Rather than your own. Yeah. yeah. You've already mentioned that, you know, anyone trying to manipulate me sexually through the use of shame or through the use of threats or, or through, the through the use of sexual reward, desire, reward. You're or, sort of a... A short term. Oh, you're a lovely, lovely person because you gave me the sexual yes. feeling as I wanted. I'd be impervious to all of that. Yeah. And that feels good. <laughs> that feels good. It doesn't necessarily feel good for the people on, on the, the other, other end, end of it because <laughs> they want it, right? Yeah. And so often they will be angry with you. You'll see their true colours, which mm. is what I like. You, mm -hmm. you see what's truly motivating them. So, so for, for, for a woman who uses sexual uh, energy in order to get what she wants, she has no effect on me whatsoever, yeah. and she, and they get very angry with me very quickly as a yes. result, you know. Yeah. And now you see that's your true that's your true character. That's the reason why you're using sexual energy mm. is just to manipulate me, and you see it straight away. Yes. You know? It's like it's like seeing clearly what's going on very quickly. And also within that, say um, if a woman say I your soulmate tries to to manipulate you sexually in order to avoid some feeling within myself um, and you have this very strong sexual morality you won't engage with me that triggers usually the emotion I was trying to avoid so shame <laughs> yeah, exactly. so it's yeah. not just um, women who want to gain power or whatever sometimes women want to avoid, avoid shame. shame yeah or a lot of times women uh you know transact sexually to avoid fear as well that yes whether it be financial fear or otherwise a lot of men transact sexually in order to feel good about themselves so it's all about worth for, for mm -hmm. many men for women oftentimes it's about fear fear uh, avoiding fear. fear of violence fear is of violence is one of them yeah. And, and all of those things get exposed Yes. Under the, yes. under the condition where you're not sharing in the transaction. Yes. Yeah. So the person on the receiving end, not so great. But in, from God's perspective, excellent for the yes. person on the receiving end. Yeah, it's good yeah. for the person on the receiving end uh, yeah. of that because it, they, they, their true motivations are exposed. Yes. And they start seeing that sexuality has just become a tool for them to use rather than it being used in a pure manner as God mm -hmm. intended. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Excellent. Um, okay, what else have we got here? Um, I have, we've spoken that I just have all these lovely emotional and physical rewards. And obviously, after I pass the rewards, I are far exceed anything that I feel here. And that I'm not, I'm not burdened by the sexual shame that I need to repent for from my se own sexual immorality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, can, uh, I need to add one reward too, and that is if you have a very uh, solid emotional, if you've worked through your emotional barter with regard to sexual morality, um, now all of your sexual desires are only for your soulmate. Now that has a very large effect on, on your soulmate, whether they yes. are in your life or not and they get drawn into your life as a result of that. So, so now there's a very high likelihood of you meeting your soulmate yeah. on earth, yeah. rather than as most people do, they usually meet their soulmates in the fifth or sixth sphere of the spirit mm -hmm. world. 
which is many years to come. Mm -hmm. So the earlier you meet your soulmate, the more opportunities you have to work through your relationship and enjoy the benefits of that relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can meet them on Earth, then obviously now you've got opportunities to work through any relationship issues on Earth together, which mm. is fantastic. And uh, and I feel, you know, this is one of the benefits of having that like solid view of your sexual morals. So it's really a fast track to your complete soul's growth, actually. And to your complete soul's happiness. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's if we're talking about in kind rewards here this feeling, this regard and value for my own sexual morality, um, the desire to have my sexual expression and sexual feelings in harmony with God's desires for, for my sexual feelings and expressions, that leads to a, a compounding effect. That's part of the in-kind uh, reward, isn't it? Mm. That I'm not only drawing more sexually moral people into my life, but I'm feeling. Uh, but you don't share anything morally with uh, sexually with them. Yes. You're only sharing it with your soulmate. But the beauty of the soulmate relationship too is the intensity of those sexual feelings can grow. Yes. Along with the growth of your relationship. Yeah. So instead of the honeymoon period, the first part of your relationship being the best. Yeah. You end up. In a, in a situation where the first part might be a bit difficult, yes. but as you progress and time goes on and on, your emotional and sexual and physical and happiness, spiritual and intimacy. happiness, all of these other yep. connections that you have with your other half, all intensify yep. and improve yep. in, their, in, their, in the happiness in you their receive quality, from, in, in their, their quality, in their kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that, that's a huge advantage mm. to having that, that kind of... Um, Relate, you know, concept of your own sexual morality. Yeah, mm. yeah, right. Compensatory penalties of sexual immorality. So here I'd like to ask you, what are the penalties in kind, the compensation in kind I receive when I am sexually immoral? Yeah, well, you can see that if you're sexually immoral, then it's highly likely that the people around you know that you'll give your sexual energy to anybody mm -hmm. um, and and therefore it's highly unlikely that you will be trusted sexually by them mm -hmm. and it's highly likely they will just use the fact that you give it to anybody but but not really ever have a sustained relationship with somebody who is willing to do that mm -hmm. so it's highly likely you're going to attract a person into your life who's also highly immoral sexually yeah. and therefore you're both of you and are living what you believe is your perfect life yeah. but but the reality is that there's a lot of distance between you sexually because you're willing to engage sexually with anyone mm -hmm. it's not a precious resource in, mm -hmm. so inside of you and therefore it's probably not a precious resource inside of the people you attract and even if it is a precious resource inside of the piece, person I attract, I'm going to um, devalue it within them. If, if Even if they value it, I'll start to devalue it in them and try, yes. almost try to be very, push it out of them. Yes, it would be a very tough relationship. Yeah. If you, you will attempt probably to get them to be more sexually immoral. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when that does not succeed, mm -hmm. uh, if it succeeds, then you might be happy for a short period of time, but they're not going to be very happy with that. Yeah. And then if it, if it does not succeed, then you're both going to be very unhappy. You're not going to be able to maintain your relationship at all, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and I'll also have a lot of negative emotional and physical uh, repercussions of the lack of sexual immorality, whether I'm single or with it. In yeah, a there's a huge amount of diseases on this planet now that are all associated with sexual immorality. Mm. So, you know, you know, including all the the venereal diseases mm -hmm. uh, and the transmission of such in mm -hmm. particular, and uh, you know the creation of the subsequent pain and suffering that all of those create mm -hmm. is quite intense. Uh, so much so that, you know, the world itself is dealing with epidemics of them yeah. all around the world. Yeah. And, and, and very, very harsh. Uh, it's very hard to deal with physical diseases that are associated with your sexual parts. Yes. Uh, because of the, uh, the shame-based feelings associated, guilt-based and shame-based feelings associated with them. And mm. so it, it's often very, very difficult and painful emotionally. Mm. Because sometimes we inherit from our society or our family line 
a sense of sexual shame, which from God's perspective is a lack of sexual. It's out of harmony with love of self. Yes. Yes. But very, so when we're speaking about sexual immorality here, we're really speaking about a lot of different uh, things, aren't we? Where any error we have about our sexuality from that's different from God's idea of our sexuality is going to create uh, penalties, compensatory yes. As, kind and penalties. And that applies with every yeah. aspect of our life. Every area where we're out of harmony with God's definition of love, we are always going to create physical as well as emotional and spiritual aspects of penalties associated with the soul. So this, remember the penalty is imposed upon the soul, but then because of the soul's emotions, mm -hmm. it gets imposed upon the spirit body and the physical body. Yes. So that means pain results in the spirit body and the physical body, yes. uh, physical body as a result. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, the future penalties um, are going to be large as well, not just the ones I encounter on earth. Yeah. 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 If you're in the spirit world, it is very, very hard for a person who's sexually immoral to progress because mm. their whole life is governed by their sexual condition. Mm. So all they want is sa satisfaction of their sexual condition. Mm -hmm. And it's like a frenzy. Mm. And it's very, very hard to give up. It's like a drug in its own right. It, it, uh, it has, in fact, similar effects on the brain mm. of the spirit body as drugs do uh, on the physical body mm. and so it's very very hard to actually give up these problems uh, after you've passed and therefore there's a lot of pain usually associated after you've passed giving those things up mm. 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 okay uh, god can't maintain a relationship uh, with me while i'm sexually immoral while i'm immoral in any way yeah. the reason why is god has a definition of morals and god's uh, trying to help us get to his definition of morals and, and when I don't have a, the same idea of morals as God does, obviously I am automatically breaking my relationship with God. In other words, I can't have a connection with God because I don't believe what God knows is true yeah. anymore. Yeah. And, uh, and that makes it very, very difficult to maintain a relationship. It's the same with people. If, if, I, if me and you have very different concepts or ideas about something and we, we hold on to them emotionally, and, uh, and one of those concepts happens to be wrong, out of harmony with love, there's going to be a huge amount of uh, breakdown of our relationship as a result yeah. of that. And yeah. it's exact, exactly the same effect on our relationship with God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And again, the repentance is going to be pretty intense for me. So, and here, this is a great to draw the comparison between penalties and repentance. Because the, we're talking about all these penalties that we're incurring, these in-kind penalties. And a lot of them, as you mentioned at the start of our session, are there to sort of lead us towards a state of desiring with our heart to remedy our sin, mm. which is the process, the initial stages of repentance. That's right. Um, so when we're talking about when we're willfully sinning, Obviously, the amount we have to repent for is quite large and increasing while, yes. we, while we resist the awareness and the knowledge of our compensatory penalties. Yes. So our, our baggage, if you like, of repentance, our bag, you know, is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. And, yeah. and therefore more painful. Yeah. So the more we have to repent for, the more painful the process of repentance is going to be. Mm. And, uh, and obviously, the more I resist it, the more painful also it's going to be so yeah. you know you can see that it's sort of like a, a snowball running down a hill if we're not careful we can be like an out of control process when it comes to just generating more and more and more and pain and suffering for ourselves yeah as well as for others of course mm. and uh, and as a result of that pain and suffering we're going to have to have a lot to deal with yeah and, and that's unfortunate but it's our own creation yes mm -hmm. yeah Yes. So lots of penalties for sexual immorality. <laughs> yes. So, so we can see from these discussions, uh, including this one, uh, that, that, you know, conversation in kind occurs and there are rewards and penalties for, for in kind. And we need mm -hmm. to understand that. And if we can understand that, then there's a high likelihood we'll choose some of these big areas of our, our life. Yes. Uh, such as the, you know, areas of ethics or truth or morality. Mm -hmm. We'll choose these big areas of our life and then we'll go, right, if I can resolve some of the issues in these big areas of my life, then a lot of my life is going to change. 
Yes, and the rewards are going to be compounding, whereas my penalties have been compounding and drawing more and more in-kind mm. problems to me. If I can resolve them, then my rewards are going to actually bring more... I see it as God's way of supporting my change, mm -hmm. actually. Of course it is. Yeah. Um, God's way of, of bringing me more things that encourage my change and support me to... It's almost like creating an environment where truth is honoured and truth is valued. Well, that makes it easier for me to be truthful at all times. Mm. But I first have to value truthfulness inside of me. That's right. And when I begin to embrace that, then the external things around me can change mm. and my internal sense of well-being can change as well. Yeah. But often we want it to happen in the reverse, don't yes. we? And the reason why we've talked about these penalties versus rewards is so that we can encourage people to look at their desires and go, well, do I want the rewards or do I want to keep ha ha having to deal with the penalties? Yeah. What, what, it's a decision <laughs> we need to make at some point. You know, what am I going to do? Am I going to stop the unloving behaviour and, and change my behaviour to be loving behaviour or what? What, mm -hmm. what, what? what decision am I going to make? Mm. With the knowledge of the consequence of such decisions. Yes. See, at the moment, most people on the planet don't believe in the consequences mm -hmm. of unloving decisions yeah. and so therefore have no motivation to change yeah. them. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this video, you clearly desire an awareness <laughs> of penalties and rewards and hopefully that even if that's just a thought right now, yeah. can encourage you to gain more awareness. That would be a compensation in kind. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>